Hello and welcome to another Indie Labs where we put the science in your hands. Today's experiment is an awesome yet very simple one. I love this one. We're going to be dealing with showing you some evidence that atoms exist. How do we know that atoms exist? You can just Google an image and you can find pictures of atoms. We have that technology. But how'd they come up with the idea back in the day? What they relied upon was a lot of indirect evidence. What is indirect evidence? Well, direct evidence would be I actually can see it, touch it, feel it, hold it. Whereas indirect evidence is other clues that we have to use to deduce what we're actually seeing. For example, if I'm walking along the beach and I actually see some horses running down the beach, I've got direct evidence that there's horses there. I saw them with my own eyes. If instead, I'm just walking along the beach and I see hoof prints in the sand, well, that's some indirect evidence of horses. While we're at it, there's a saying, if you see hoof prints on the sand, we tend to think horses before we think zebras. It's Occam's razor. The simplest explanation tends to be the correct one. For finding out about the atom, scientists had to use lots of hoof prints in the sand to figure out that they really existed, and that's what we're going to be doing today. For today's experiment, the only thing you're going to need is a glass that you can easily see through that has some water in there, and you're going to need a 9-volt battery. Now, this is a really cheap way of doing some electrolysis, but fair warning, that battery is a goner after this. So make sure that you've got the permission to actually waste the battery doing this. But other than that, this is a pretty inexpensive lab. Also, a little bit of prerequisite knowledge is that you got to know water's formula. What is the formula for water? Most of you probably know it's H2O. What does that H2O mean? It means two parts hydrogen for every one part oxygen. And when we say parts, we mean atoms. The smallest part you can have of water is one molecule of water. And that's made up of three parts, two of which are hydrogen atoms. The other one is an oxygen atom. This quick and easy experiment is going to be able to show us some indirect evidence that water really is made out of parts. Oh yeah, one more thing I hope you already know. You shouldn't really play around with water and electricity. And today, we're going to play around with water and electricity. But we're doing it in a safe way. You're not going to get zapped by this, but what we're going to do is take that battery and we're going to place it into the water. You can do this with your fingers, you don't feel any electricity. But this does not mean you get to start taking forks and sticking them in the sockets. Now something else that's going to help is I'm going to put something dark in the background. This is going to help us see the results of our experiment. Take my battery and I'm going to place it right in the water. And immediately you're going to start to see something happening. So what's happening there? What do you notice? What do you observe? If you said bubbling, yeah, you're right, but go a little bit further. What do you notice about the bubbles? How is this evidence of atoms? Remember, water's formula is H2O. Think about that. What if I told you that one of the terminals is producing hydrogen, the other one's producing oxygen? Now, I didn't tell you which one, but can you figure out which one's producing hydrogen and which one's producing oxygen? Go ahead and pause the video, and in fact, pausing it might help you. Did you come up with the idea that one terminal is producing twice as many bubbles as the other terminal? One that's producing twice as many, that's hydrogen. It's the negative electrode. The positive electrode, that one's producing oxygen. Thanks to Amadeo Avogadro, back in 1810, he came up with the idea that equal volumes of gases that are at equal temperature and pressure to each other will have the same number of parts, same number of particles. Now, these bubbles aren't exactly equal volumes, granted. But still, you can see twice as many bubbles coming from one terminal versus the other would indicate twice the number of parts. That water is made up of two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. The only way that this is possible is if the water pieces themselves are made up of individual parts. Three parts total, two of which are hydrogen, the third one is oxygen. Electrolysis started happening around 1800, just after Alessandro Volta invented the voltaic pile was the first battery. It's also why our 9-volt battery has the name that it does. We took Volta's last name and we used it to come up with the unit, the volt, which measures electric potential energy. After Volta had invented the voltaic pile, people started using that to do electrolysis a lot and study the components of water. We were able to see that with two parts being broken up compared to one part of another, that these two gases were the fundamental building parts that made up what water was. This experiment is cheap, cool, and awesome for what it can do. But don't just watch the video. Try it out for yourself. 
See what else you can observe. What else can you notice? Hey, can you come up with a way to actually measure how much hydrogen compared to oxygen there is? A better way than just counting bubbles? Also, could you design an experiment that could verify that what we think is the hydrogen gas here really is hydrogen? And that the oxygen gas really is oxygen? There's plenty of experiments that you could come up with offshooting from this. If you got a kick out of this lab and you enjoyed it and you want more, go ahead and subscribe to the Mr. Lund Science channel and we'll keep you up to date with Indie Labs where we're going to put the science in your hands. I'm Rich Lund. Thanks for watching. Elemental symbols. BR's not brass and it ain't bronze neither. Believing it is is like believing in the ether. BR's bromine, if you know what I mean. Second liquid on the table other than mercury. Mercury's HG, Greek for hydrogerum. If you think that's hydrogen, you need a sanitarium. Hydrogen's just H. Simple as that. Used in the Hindenburg, as a matter of fact. And if you ask historians, I know you'll be feeling them. Since it blew sky high, should've used helium.